Good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Today's Restaurant <clears throat> News Networking Group, Chapter 2. We are a group of restaurant vendors who are here to help each other grow our businesses and to help any restaurants who might have a problem or an issue that they may want to get information on. The group itself uh, has hundreds of years of experience in the industry, and we're happy to help if anybody wants to come to a meeting. Uh, you're welcome to join us at, uh, give us a call at 561-620-8888 or go on our website, trnusa.com. Uh, prior to the uh, recording starting, we were just talking about economics and rest businesses that are opening and closing. And Brian and I uh, have this conversation every once in a while. So I'm going to bring it up to you guys. Um, do you think that we are in a recession now? And if yes or no, and where do you see it possibly going? And Brian just dropped off. Hi. I would say that we've been in a recession for a while. The Absolutely. numbers don't, don't look it, but the underlying uh, tension is there. And I think we're sort of immune from it in the Southeast because of all the immigration coming down here or migration of people. But I think up North and, and the West are already feeling it badly. I, I have to agree with Ed. But I think the media is afraid to admit it, and so is the feds, because I think there would be a major sell-off on Wall Street. Because people will be worried about their money, they'll be worried about their um, their uh, 401ks, and such and so forth. I think there'll be a major sell-off of banks. I mean, we've already had three major banks fail, and if it hadn't been for the FDIC kicking in, you know, be a lot of There's people. And there's two more on their way out. I heard last night when I was watching, um, and not redacted, but I watch um, the gentleman that does um, all the business news on Fox, and he was talking about the other two banks that are going down. Are you talking about the gentleman with the British accent? No. Okay. Larry Cudlow? But I do watch him, too. <laughs> yeah, he's good, that guy. Larry Cudlow is good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, know what's, yeah. you know what's sad though is that 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 last one, the First Republic, that just got bought out by J.P. Morgan, was yeah. there were a lot of people that put millions and millions of dollars in that bank, and FDIC only goes up to what quarter million? Yeah, two fifty. Mm. Look at all that money that was still <laughs> lost. I mean, you know, I would never go into a bank, or, or I would. I would not put all my eggs in one basket. I would diversify my funds because if something like that does happen, you know, a lot of people <laughs> are in the welfare line because of that today. Well, yeah, I, but I was watching. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, but uh, right now, <clears throat> the FDIC has in fact been backing all the deposits up to millions and millions of dollars full. They're not going by the $250,000 anymore because Signature Bank and uh, First the one in California, they they guaranteed all the money for all the deposits. Oh, okay. Okay. We're definitely in a recession. I mean, my my biggest vendor at Pfizer, at Clover POS, they've increased their hardware and now their software prices three times in the last twelve months, uh, including just now. And uh, new businesses uh, opening. I mean, between the list I buy from Terry and the other ones I buy, I used to send out. 250 new businesses a week just in Florida and maybe Georgia. It's down to barely 100 right now. 100 new business openings a week is what, oh. I'm, what I'm sending out. So that's the biggest barometer to me. I mean, Miami seems immune to it because there's so much high income down there and big groups. And even down here in Fort Lauderdale, it's not too bad. But uh, um, it's the, the new business openings have really dropped off. Well, and the uh, that's to me is the biggest barometer. For my industry, anyway. The, the, yeah. safest, the safest barometer, seriously, is go to a business supply business and ask them, how are the sales on calculators? And if he says, oh, calculator's going through the roof, that's good news. If he says, nah, nobody's bought a calculator in three months. Ah. Yeah. 
Not well, we yet. heard last night that Office Depot's closing. Yeah, no. they're closing almost all their stores. Yeah, really? Office Depot has been having trouble for a long time. Wow. Yeah. Well, when's the last time you, the last time I went to an Office Depot, you walk in, and it's like, hello, 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 hello. Yeah, right. right. Well, right. does anybody come over and say, may I help you? No. Well, didn't they buy out? They bought out Office Max. Because that's right. Of, so that's going to leave only Staples now. And I mean, there's no other office supply store out there unless you want well, to buy your Amazon. It's called Amazon. Yeah, yeah it's called Amazon. Amazon. That's where I buy everything. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Yes. But you know, Ed, you know, Ed was mentioning something. Didn't the feds just raise the interest rates again this week to try and mm -hmm. yes, a point two five? It is 0. now 5. five point two five. And they said they made a guarantee they wouldn't raise it again for another 12 or 18 months. Well, we know that's not gonna happen. Right. I mean, they're trying to they're trying to slow it down. They're trying to slow everything down. And you know, I can tell you house prices here in Huntsville have dropped considerably. I was watching a video yeah, last night Florida. of the, the the owner of the largest, uh, the chief executive of the largest hedge fund in the in the country or the world, and he was talking about he would never put all his money in one like somebody said a minute ago. Never put all your money in one vehicle. You always have to be diversified, or layered. And uh, that's the kind of companies he's always looking for that are non-connected. So if he sees that there's a, a, an opportunity, to, let's say, to buy Office Depot, he would never buy uh, Staples as well because they, they're connected. And if something big happens in, in that industry, they both go down. So he's always hedging one against the other. Yeah, but Howard, uh, out in Signature Bank, they made all their money by going to the people who are getting startup money. And they would right. get millions and millions of dollars in startup. And then they would require those people to deposit the, all that in their bank as part of the deal. Right. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Yes, so that, that's one of the reasons why they had so many problems is because that's why I had all those loans that were over 250,000 or, or the deposits were over 250,000 because they were requiring the startups, the IPOs, to deposit their funds there, do all their bank into that bank. In that's, order not terribly un, get... that's not terribly unusual. Um, in in uh, in most lending, in in uh, not all, in, in most lending situations, uh, if the loan is substantial, the bank will have you uh, uh, make all your deposits, uh, bring all your. To them. Now, I got to tell you, I've done a lot of loans for people, and none of these banks ever follow through. And it's actually even funny when you try to live by the, the rule, most of them, you know, look at you like you're crazy and don't make it easy. Um, but, but see, that was one of the reasons why Signature had issues, and the, and the FDIC people in California ignored that, even though they kept bringing it up in the reports. So they, the FDIC is is culpable in all all that. It's action actually, it's there. actually worse than that. They had one of the, uh, um, what is it called? The, not the FDIC. The Fed. Uh, one of the Fed. Uh, what are they called? Uh, for Nakini's his bunch. Uh, I forget the titles. Federal Reserve. Uh, the regional uh, banks. Yeah. No, but one of the um, what Bernanke is. Um, Federal Reserve. Chairman, chairman of the Fed, but there are, there are a bunch of directors. I, I forget their exact titles, and the one world. of them is on on their board which is, you know, that's automatically almost criminal, frankly. You can't, a regulator cannot ever be on the board of a bank. Really, give me a break. <laughs> Steve, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to uh, sort of put you on the, the line, put you on the hot seat for a second. Right. I've got both uh, shoulders and a big ass. You know, <laughs> for, those, for those of you who had, who had the chance to read our May issue, Steve wrote an article for us. Uh, uh, and Steve, uh, could could you discuss that article? Just just very simplistically. Uh, I, I know I wrote the article, and I'll admit to I, I know what it is. So it's not like I'm, you know, I wrote the article and totally ignorant. But it's one of my first uses of ChatGPT, and the way that article was written, it was um, uh, basically I asked ChatGPT, uh, "What is a Rob, and how do you use it to buy a business?" And then I edited it. Um, but I, a Rob basically is a self-directed Roth IRA. 
So you can take that money and essentially invest it in a business. So it's a it's a very good way. You know, it can be a restaurant, it can be you know uh, a dry cleaning store, it can be whatever you want. Um, the structure, however, you just can't do it. In other words, you can't take the money out yourself and do it because in if you uh, IRAs are designed so they're tax free as long as you don't withdraw the money. So if you were to essentially take that money and put it into anything, business, bonds, you know, any anything you want, that would essentially be taking the money out of the IRA. So notice that what I said was self-directed. The, the Roth is given to a third party who controls it, and they make the investment on your behalf. Does that explain it? And there are lots of nuances, and you... Uh, it is not necessarily easy to do, and you need an expert in the business. And one of my clients uh, is, in fact, doing that <clears throat> by business. Is that the uh, is that the only way the rob can be used? Is basically the no, no. You can, you can actually invest. You can actually. So th normally, IRAs are you put your money into stuff, some sort of investment vehicle, uh, bonds. Uh, you know, they you, they you give it to somebody and they invest it for you, typically on some in some market facility. Uh, it could be savings, it could be stocks, it could be anything, but somebody else is doing that for you and you're hopefully uh, getting a return of some sort. So it's the same principle. You're giving the money to somebody and you can direct it in, it, it's a self-directed IRA. So it doesn't only have to be for, uh, businesses uh, to buy a business, it can be to invest in whatever. I mean, you can, you you know, and and there may be some restrictions, but that's all why that's and how it, and how you do it. That's all um, part of why you need a third party to do it for you because you can't, you can't physically do it. I read that a couple times and I wasn't exactly sure. Okay, good. That explains it. <laughs> okay. But you you know we were talking about restaurants and businesses going out of business, but you see like what happened this week with uh, Darden buying Ruth Chris. I, I you think that's going to become more prevalent as we go along in well, the I, in the so called consolidations uh, for sure. I mean, in in bad times, there are always consolidations. Yeah. Yeah, but but, but all but Olive Garden is a Darden concept. And Olive Garden is closing half of their stores. Well, it doesn't mean that yeah. Darden isn't having problems. Yeah. It, it means so that they had some extra cash, and maybe right. they said maybe we can support you know our company by buying this very successful chain. Um, I wrote an uh, an article also. I, I use ChatGPT to help me write because I'm a terrible writer. So I wrote an article. Is it a good time to buy a business in a in a down economy? And uh, while it, it, the interesting thing, when I put it in the, into ChatGPT and I and I put some other stuff into it, I, I gave it some context, so to speak. Um, it came up with a list of companies and I wasn't sure about all of them, but I did know some of them. For instance, Uber uh, was in fact formed, came out during a downturn in the economy. So- That's uh, correct. You know what? You're absolutely so right. I, you know, my, I like I to say- I like to say in good times, businesses fail and in bad times, businesses succeed. It's not necessarily the same, you know, set of companies. It, it really is all about what you're doing and how you're doing it. I mean, if you got a good idea and it's and the market needs it, you will succeed if you can execute it properly. And if you don't execute properly, well, you're going to fail no matter what. Hey, um, Steve. Prime example, I, was, uh, I don't know if Chris knows about, but Crystal was, I guess it was here in Atlanta. Crystal was bought by a craft brewery company. Crystal's right. Lambert. Right. Oh, they're closing too, by the way. No, no, they were just pulled out. They're also closing many of their stores. Mm -hmm. so what craft brewery company, company bought it? Who bought it? I'm sorry? What, 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 what brewery company bought Crystal? I don't know. I'm trying to do some research on it to find out. Yeah, hold on. I'll Terry, Terry has it. Time to get consolidations. I mean, that's uh, that's that is what goes on. Um, you know, this this, this uh, hedge fund manager who I was listening to last night, he was talking. Oh, okay. He was talking about 
the the dollar uh, with China and Russia and some of the other companies are now trying not to use the American dollar for transactions and trying to take it off the I, I feel well, what, the, the BRIC countries. Yeah, uh, the, yeah Brazil, the, Russia, uh, India, I think, China, yeah. and, and K is Iran. Not sure what. Well, yeah. it's not going to so, matter Iran. because so now the, Iran is 80%, almost 90% ready to, they've got five nukes. Well, they, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, get, let me finish my thought before we, before we go off the rails. Wait, let me, oh. let me finish what I was going to say. The, the reason that the, that there was so much discussion about the American dollar not being the standard anymore, he said, has happened in history. It happened to the uh, to England when they were the when they were the dominant force in the world. And I, well, I think I forgot the term that they used for uh, the currency. But anyway, oh, you mean the Tea Party? The pound. Oh. The pound. The pound. Yeah, the pound. but what, but what they say is the pound wasn't used as the as the the currency of choice. Let's put it that way. Uh, so he was saying, he says it, it's pretty pretty simple. It's happened before. It's happened to them. It happened to. Uh, another another country as well, and it's it's very possibly could happen with the American dollar. And the reason for it is pretty simple. You don't even then don't forget this is the man who runs the largest hedge fund in the world, so he knows what he's talking about. He said the United States put sanctions on Russia, and when you put sanctions on a country, you're limiting their ability to do business with you so they have to find other ways to do that so russia looked to china and china and russia got together and they're going to use whatever they're going to use the the chinese currency china is doing that because there's a potential of the united states putting sanctions on china as well because of the taiwan situation and because they're helping russia so if what happens is all these countries that the United States puts sanctions on and limit them, pushes them into devaluing the dollar. And I'm talking just, I'm trying to repeat what he said with no knowledge of it. I'm just, I'm acting like a puppet now. So what, does, that, does that make sense to you? Do you see that happening? There, there's one issue with that. And... The fact is, in order for you to be a world currency, you have to have dollars or whatever it is that are accepted around the world and are easily tradable. Right. The Chinese currency is not easily tradable. Okay, you, sure. there's restrictions on the use of that. So I don't see the Chinese currency. Now, can I see uh, the Indian currency? That's a possibility because they're more open. Can I see the Russian? No, because Russia controls the value of their currency. So that's the other the other part of that. What's going to happen? I don't know. But that's right. Before the United States uh, in the 50s took over, it was the British pound that everything was traded in. Right, right. And the, right, Euro, right. the Euro is trying to do that too. But they're, I, I don't know what's wrong with the Euro other than it, they, it goes all over the place. And right. that's and the I don't problem know. with the Euro. It goes all over the place. It's been around a long time. And it's still is sitting where it was sitting in the beginning. Well, it goes to it's you know, the the trouble of the euro is you're looking at it from our perspective. So, you know, when you say a dollar, you you have a certain idea of value. Mm -hmm. And when you look at any other currency, you look at that currency in respect to yours. So there's always going to be variation. It doesn't mean that your currency is stronger than the other one. It just means that there's a difference in valuation. In a certain right. sense, I mean, you're right. Um, and the, the restriction China places on the currency is, is problematic in making it a, uh, a, a universal currency. But the truth is, it is prob probably, this is Steve guessing, I know no more than anyone, is um, that it, it, it is the largest economy and, and essentially when you become the largest economy, 
You get to dictate. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're, we're right. Anyway, it was Fortress Investment Group that bought Crystal in Dunwoody, Georgia, by the way. Okay. Where's Dunwoody, Georgia? North of Atlanta. <laughs> Okay. It's suburb. It's, it's suburb right behind Atlanta. Chris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where are the onions is good. Right. <laughs> and it was the only bidder because they had twenty-one million dollars in debt. Yeah. Who's twenty-one million dollars in debt? Crystal. Crystal. But crystals and checkers are one. Is that one company or the? No. No, Crystals and Ra no, it was the Rallies and Checkers are the same company. Right, Rallies uh, and Checkers. Oh, Tampa. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, by the way, Rallies is closing too. So, so what you think in Howard is Crystal and White Castle are very similar. Yeah, they're very similar. But yeah. well, I think White Castle came first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah there used to be a Crystals in Fort Lauderdale on Sunrise Boulevard. It's about the only one down here in South Florida. It's similar to a checkers and white castle. I used to love those. Yeah. yeah. I ate one in six nineteen sixty-eight and I still have a stomach ache, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's two places in Huntsville you can go and get a hamburger after eleven o'clock. One is Crystal, the other one is Whataburger. I take Whataburger, Whataburger over yeah. Crystal any day. Oh, absolutely. And they're building one hundred Whataburgers in Georgia and Alabama. Oh yeah, and they're all they're wow. popping up all over the place here. Absolutely. They just opened up a new one right like three or four miles just down from my office. But you know, it's, it's, it's but it's funny because the what when they open up that Whataburger in South Huntsville, they had to have police out there directing traffic to get in and out. The one that just opened up down my office. The parking lot's empty half the time. I guess it's just demographics and area. It's really, really weird how it's the same, same burger, same company. Just have you tried their cinnamon roll? Their <laughs> cinnamon roll is better than uh, cinnamon. I didn't know the what. I I go I go to Whataburger for a hamburger, not a cinnamon roll. Hmm. But you no. know, I've never been in one. A what? You've never been to Whataburger? You go to no. really? Never. Oh, they, had those, they had those orange uh, chalet shaped roofs is how they started in 1951. And um, <laughs> shape of a W. Yeah. 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 W. And they start. They, well, no, I that was Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> that was Wiener Schnitzel. They had the shape of a, of a chalet like this in an orange, orange building. But that W was uh, Wiener Schnitzel. And they're still alive and well in California, by the way. And they're good. And if I'm not mistaken, Whataburger started in Texas. Correct. Yeah, they started in Texas. Yeah. What is the thing behind Whataburger? It's just sort of an odd name. Well, I mean, it's a man, what a burger. I mean, you know, it's all, all their burgers are are made to order. Um, so if you go through the drive through be prepared to sit there and wait. But their fame is they have so many different types of sauces. Um, and uh, they're famous for their milkshakes. Um, but their hamburgers are not like the size of a McDonald's hamburger. It's like going to a Chili's or a sit-down restaurant where you can get a really nice, big, large burger. Um, but everything's fresh. Everything's made fresh there. Um, I, I like there's better places, but I'd go there before I went to McDonald's. You know, what about In and Out? In and Out's the number one hamburger chain in America. Really? But they won't go yep. east of the Mississippi. They will not go east of the Mississippi. No. I would just have nope. them here. They will not. It's just I just don't know why. And they don't have to because they're so good. Oh my gosh. They it's only like, sell uh, hamburgers, fries, and shakes. That's it. It's like a West Coast religion. Restaurant. That's the first place we go when we go to California and we go towards but, my son's uh, home in the country club is right there is. <laughs> when I went out, when I went out to California, it's been a while, but the one thing I like about in and out is when you go through the drive through they repeat the order to you to make sure they got it right. And then they give you the total. 
A lot of places will have the screen. It'll pop up on the screen. They may have the screen, but they still repeat the order back to you. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're successful is their customer service. And it's like Chick-fil-A. They have two lines, three lines, mm. and they, they're they just, they're so good. Oh, my gosh. We just had a Chick-fil-A open down here by us. It's yeah, the lines right into our driveway. Yeah. No. Well, I, I, I understand that uh, uh, Canes, can we think what that chain called? Canes? Yeah. Oh, Canes Chicken Fingers. Canes Chicken Fingers opened in, uh, I forget where, in Florida yesterday. There was a three hour wait. People got online at two o'clock in the morning to, to get, I, I'm, you know, I won't wait 20 minutes to go to a restaurant. And people are waiting three, camping out and waiting three hours to get a chicken sandwich. Yeah, uh, you send me. <laughs> <laughs> what's so big he about this? Someone watches TV and sends me. What's, what's so my son I like said that approach. Oh, you <laughs> got to go. My son said the sauce is, he goes there and you can buy the sauce um, in the stores, but it's really supposed to be something. I don't know. So do you think you think that we're in we're in a recession? Do you think it's going to grow? See, I I listen to some of these experts on TV, not, not on mainstream TV. I listen to uh, conspiracy theories TV. <laughs> it's a special channel, but it's it's uh. Eric Steckelback. Excuse me. <laughs> the uh, the recession is supposedly not what's going to happen some people i know like glenn beck if he, you know glenn beck yeah. he said if you think you have we're going to have a recession you're wrong if you think we're going to have a depression we're wrong you're wrong he said it's going to be a complete collapse of the uh, he, I, mean, know, I, I don't I like believe glenn that beck, but he's a i don't believe that would happen very much over i the do top. i do what what steve i like glenn beck but he's very much over the top yeah He's uh, over you know. the top, but he's he's talking about the 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 combination of the nuclear war possibility. But, but he's always somebody... talking about that. As long as I've, I've, I've he's been on the air. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, he does it very nicely. So you you know, <laughs> <laughs> he does it very nicely. He does. I mean, he speaks very well, and he's calmly, and you know, uh, you know, he's he's not asking everybody to charge out and do something but uh, uh is it a possibility sure everything's a possibility i suspect not but i have no idea what's going to happen uh, nobody does uh and everybody i talk to doesn't and, and people who have are in a position to worry about things like that uh, uh, because there are things that just don't make any sense i mean i'm not sure how we have low unemployment High job, high job availability, and and interest rates going through the roof. I mean, I I just yeah. don't, I, I don't understand it. There's nothing well, what I don't understand is what Biden's doing, and I don't really know much about it. But supposedly, if you got decent credit, a good credit, <laughs> and you apply for a mortgage, you're paying a higher rate than a than a startup or a guy with a 500 credit score. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Joe. Well, so I'm going to one. Hey Joe, hey Joe, I, I may be crossing the line here, but that's socialism, my friend. That's exactly yeah, what exactly. That is. Well, that is what they want to do, but it, it's robbing go. from the rich and taking care of the poor. Yeah, right. I mean, every time we turn around, there's something else going on. You know, it's almost like it, it, it's they're trying to move away from capitalism. They're trying to punish individuals. I'm sitting here watching. Um, I'm really, really big into documentaries and on the Hulu network, you can go and just, you can download all these documentaries. And I was watching the Titans that built America. Right. Yeah. About JP Morgan. They're talking about yeah. um, uh, Boeing, all these capitalists and they're bla And then when FDR comes into office, they blame JP Morgan for the depression. 
They're blaming mm -hmm. this for this and this for this because they don't want the capitalists. They don't want people making more money than other people. And if and then they're going to break you up. I mean, I'm thinking about Ma Bell, you know, the the telephone company that got yeah. so big, the government. And and I was I was at a conference this past week, and the Department of Insurance Commissioner for the state of Alabama came to speak, and he said he's getting sick and tired of government overreach. There's just too yeah. much government overreach going into everything, and that's what's happening. And it's really. That's what, I, in my opinion, I think that's what's tearing the country apart. Yeah. The simple fact that, you know, we're just going to do this and do this. So, Steve, to answer your question, people don't want to work because they know that the government's going to say, okay, well, I can buy a house now because the rich person sitting next to me is going to buy my house. Another thing, in the, Terry, you're talking about California. In the state of California, your electric bill is based on how much money you make. Oh, I know. Oh my God! And, no, and I, mean, I don't know if any. Does anybody a, watch Nick Johnson? It's a state law out there. If you make, if yeah. you make more money than your neighbor, they're going to have a lower power bill than you will. I know. My son works for <laughs> Nextra Electric, and he's up in corporate. So I know. It's. it's I mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask uh, Kevin. I don't know if this is your wheelhouse or not, but you you you're a consultant. What what do you see? What would you tell a restaurant client to do at this point in time, as far as the economy and, and budgeting, et cetera? Well, I mean, just again, history is always a good gauge, and I think somebody alluded to it earlier in the conversation. Is that um, you know, um, this, I heard a story once that this man was running a very, very successful restaurant business in New York, but he sent his son away to college to an Ivy League school, paid a ton of money to get him educated, and they were going into a recession. The indicators were there, and his son is saying, Dad, you got to cut back. Things are going bad. But he's like, look, people are staying out line, in line. He goes, no, you got to stop all your marketing, stop all your advertising. So he's like, well, I spent a lot of money. My and got a great education, I should listen to him. And slowly but surely, his business started to fade. And uh, and he went back to his son. He's like, yeah, you were right, right? Um, one of those self-fulfilling things. So I just say, um, it, it, not just in the restaurant sector, but you double down on certain things, like we talked about last week, You know, understanding your customer, understanding their wants, their needs. Um, and it's interesting. I remember in 2008, 2009, uh, things were really, really bad. But I remember driving around in a couple different cities, and the only thing that I saw was consistently packed was restaurants. So, um, so I would tell my customers, which we have, like, hey, don't, don't start to retract your dollars uh, from a marketing standpoint. Whatever you're doing, just make sure it's it's working and continue to do it, and maybe double down. So you're at, um, you're actually right. If you if you look at if you think about it. You really want to essentially, as the economy contracts, you want to bring, you need to get more people to come in and you effectively need to increase your marketing budget. It's the guy that doesn't do that, doesn't stay in, they're right. going to go elsewhere. Right. Yeah. In other words, the people that, you know, that's why in, in a certain sense, so that may be why opening a business during a downturn is good. You can get more bang for your buck in terms of advertising and so on. And and you you're driving people that you know the people who can and will do do I'm I I don't know but that uh, you you you, def, you don't necessarily want to contract. And the interesting thing is is the thing about the restaurant business and the service they provide. When things get tough, people start feeling you know their they they their emotions go negative. They become maybe a little bit desperate. But the one thing that um, people always long for is the ability to come together socialize, eat food, comfort food. So it's the one thing in society that kind of always um, is going to be there is that need to, to belong, that need to have fellowship. And so, um, you know, if, if you can capture that, I think you'll do well. I You're right. With, Everyone eats out no matter what. Yeah, I agree with, I agree with Kevin hundred percent. I mean, it just our family alone, if we've had a rough week, I mean, everybody's kind of had a rough week. We say, hey, let's go to Chili's for dinner tonight. And just, and just, and, you know, you go to a restaurant, you let somebody else take care of all the work. You can just relax and just, 
you know, decompress is the, is probably a good word to use. And and what other place to do that? I mean, it, or, or or think about this: you had a rough week at work. Hey, let's go to the bar and get a drink before we head home. I mean, it's just there's just certain things that you do that you're not going to change just because the economy is not where you feel it should be. Is yeah. we we can't stop living our lives because the economy is going crazy. Somebody mentioned yeah. earlier, somebody mentioned earlier about the, the media drives a lot of this, you know, issues where we get depressed, we get overwhelmed with, is there going to be a nuclear war? I turn, I turn the news off. I put on music when that crap starts coming on. Whenever the economy goes down, there are people who manage to make a fortune. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's just it's just something people who think out of the box, and who, who are able to pivot, and uh, for example, I, I I know I've told this story a hundred times, but Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola, uh, how Pepsi Cola uh, really originated, was they were the, they were the upstart company back in the nineteen hundreds, and they uh, during World War One there was a uh, shortage of sugar. They couldn't get sugar to produce Pepsi Cola. Coca Cola stopped production, and Pepsi Cola stopped production. But Coca Cola stopped their advertising, and Pepsi Cola decided to double down on their advertising, and they advertised like crazy for several years, even though they couldn't produce the product. And when the war was finally over, they they became the number two cola brand, just based on the fact that people knew who they were. And that and that's that's always that's always stuck in my mind. And you know, all the downturns that I've experienced in our in my business is to always increase your marketing budget during a downtime. Yeah, Howard, thinking a little bit more about your initial questions, I would just add this: if, if I was a current owner of any type of restaurant, I think we I've heard it in this group multiple times that you know customer service is is greatly lacking in a lot of places. Um, and then just keeping people. So, but if I was going to give um, wise counsel, I would say the best thing that you could do for your for your restaurant is to create an absolutely friendly, warm kind of a cheers environment where people are feel welcomed, um, they're treated well, um, and we all know that should be the basic. But I mean, how many of us have been to restaurants where you're like, I'm I don't think I'm ever coming back here. Um, or, you know, you waited. So it, it's, it, it makes it a lot more difficult in today's environment with hiring people and getting people with good attitudes. But I think um, that's an essential ingredient. And I'd say you need to focus as much effort on creating that environment in your restaurant in the way your people talk. Um, I was at a restaurant, my wife and I, a couple of weeks ago, and this girl was a superstar. I mean, like a superstar. And I seen the owner walk in and I just went up and asked him, I'm like, are you the owner? He's like, yeah, I'm going to say, you should pay this girl double. She's amazing. And he's like, yeah, I know. You know, so they're out there, but this this girl is absolutely amazing. So that customer, I mean, we, first time we were ever there and we're going to, we'll, we'll go back as long as she's there. Aw, and you know, that's nice and it makes them feel good and they do it because they know they're going to get a better tip and they need the money and, and, a lot of times it's just their personality to yeah. be that way, to make people feel good, even if they don't get it. So you were very blessed to have somebody like that. Hey, Terry, you know, um, after the hockey games, we always go to Applebee's for dinner. Okay. Uh-huh. And their service just went completely downhill. And so whenever April or Hannah go, let's go to Applebee's, I'm like, I don't want to go to Applebee's. But I said, you know what? Let's go to Applebee's. And it was the busiest I had seen the parking lot in a long time. I said, something's going on in here. Something's changed because this parking lot was always empty. So we're sitting there eating and we finishing up and the manager starts walking around and says, how was your service today? And I said, do you really want an honest answer? He goes, yeah. He goes, hold on a second. He grabbed a chair and sat at my level. Okay, sat down with me. Most managers will stand up and tower over you. They won't sit down and listen. And he, he, I told him all the bad things that have happened. He goes, how long ago was this? And I said, 
it's been about six or seven months since I've been here and I didn't want to come back because of the service. I said, I know everybody's shorthanded, but there's got to be something there to get you back in. He said he changed the mindset of the employees. He were, it's the same manager and he saw the situation. He fixed it based on listening to what the customers were wanting and saying. Right. And when a manager gets to that level, you got a good manager. And I will go back because of that manager. That's wonderful. So, so basically, we, to, in summary, we, we're talking about customer service the, the, and marketing. Which, which, well, customer service is all, all the time is, is a, a major factor. And increase in advertising during down times. So it seems pretty simple, but it's something that has to be put into, into action. And customer service is tough now because the, the hiring of people is, is become more and more difficult. Oh, yeah, there's Chris. like millions of tents in California under all the overpasses. It's become like a homeless, it's ridiculous. I mean, people drive through there videotaping um, with their cameras and showing all the millions of homeless people. It's, and one guy would live in, you know, he's got a beautiful camper, uh, tra a travel trailer. Um, and, and that's where they live because they can't afford to live anywhere anymore. San Francisco area, the, I mean, even in the LA area, um, Burbank and um, even in Orange County down in San Diego is not so bad. Uh, San Diego is wonderful, but um, it, where the stars live, they're camped out in front of their gates mm. and the police don't move them. It's insane. But, the, but they have to eat out and, and they want to go to good restaurants with good customer service. Damn it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Listen. Uh, th thanks for the conversation. We got five minutes left of the meeting. I want to do our intro so that people know who we are. So real quickly, just tell us who you are, what you do, and how people can reach you. So Rick, start us out. Rick Israel with Affiliate Health Insurers. I'm an independent insurance uh, uh, consultant. Uh, I'm based in Huntsville, Alabama. I can be reached at 256-698-8774. Okay, thanks, Ed. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Ed Gurton with Seaco Sales in Orange mm. Park, Florida. We're an equipment supply company that specializes in frozen dessert equipment, so batch freezers, uh, ice machines, uh, display cases. My number is 904-334-4489. Have a good day. Thank you. Terry. Today's Restaurant News. I handle the LEAF report. That is a monthly report that we put out hopefully by the 9th um we're working very hard to get it out by the 9th i don't think we've been late except for the holidays gives you when <clears throat> where why who email phone numbers uh and how many units are possibly coming and even if they're coming into other states we put that in if you want a sample you can go on our website request a sample at trnusa.com thank you Thank you. Chris Kaufman. Good morning, Chris Kaufman. Providing talent. How shall we say? We, we uh, provide aces for great places. Uh, recruiters in the restaurant industry since the 1980s, bringing all-star talent to all-star companies. You can reach us at 404-ALL-STAR. Thank you. Joe Cregan. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. Joe Cregan, McCoy Payment Services, just uh, outside Fort Lauderdale in Davie, Florida. Uh, we uh, we provide integrated point of sale payment and payroll processing solutions, supporting about between 700, 800 uh, rest, uh, merchants, but about 60 to 70 percent of the restaurants here in Florida and nationally. Uh, my phone number is 954-635-5044. And our website is www.cardpaymentservices.net. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin would propel you forward. We help um, operations of your organization, right? You deal with many, many um, 
things that require you to be successful. So we definitely are um, in the area of helping you with outcomes, whether that's uh, from an ordering loyalty program, from an infrastructure, from uh, guarding your business against both uh, inside and outside attacks, whether it's um, through um, a computer or just internally. So we do surveillance of both of your network and your physical locations. So it's Kevin at Propel You Forward, and that's P-R-O-P-E-L, the letter U, the number four, W-A-R-D, and .com would be our website. You can call or text me at 734-234-0208. Okay, thank you. Steve. Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Whitehill. I own Anchor Business Advisors. We are business brokers, and we help people buy and sell businesses. And um, you can reach me at 561-376-7500. Have a great day, everyone. Good. I'm Howard Appel, the founder and publisher of Today's Restaurant News. And uh, we offer digital marketing and advertising in our newspaper on our website, email blast marketing, restaurant leads reports, and video e-blast marketing. We're getting more and more action on the video side uh, as we go along. And I want to mention one other thing. Uh, we are helping people in the industry secure their ERC refund. If you are a restaurant that has been open in 2020 and 21, even if you are have closed or you're having financial difficulties now, you should definitely apply for this program. It is not a loan. This is money given to you by the by the IRS. It's a refund of your taxes. If you so I thank everybody for coming today. I want to just if you want to reach us again, give us a call at 561-620-8888. And go to our website at trnusa.com or go to our YouTube channel at Today's Restaurant. Uh, thank you all for coming. Have a great weekend. And I ended it on time for the first time in months. So I'm proud of myself. <laughs> 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 See you next week.